dots on here represent a bacterial colony that has a circular piece of DNA called a plasmid containing a pro uh, the gene for a protein I want to express. And the reason why it's not just a whole big lawn of bacteria, so it's not just like covered with bacteria, but you have these actual spots, is because um, of antibiotic selection. So also on my plasmid is an antibiotic resistance gene to the antibiotic canamycin. And then the bacteria food in this plate is spiked with canamycin. So only the bacteria that have taken in my plasmid have, um, are able to grow. And so the ones that have it, taken up and then they grow on top of each other and form these dots. Other plasmids have different antibiotic selection markers. So we have a bunch of different plates for a bunch of different purposes. And so today I want to tell you about a few of the main um, antibiotics we use, which are ampicillin, canamycin, um, and tetracycline. And also I'll talk about some of the other versions of those and how they work and how the resistance works and why it's really useful in biochemistry use harmless forms of bacteria a lot in the lab because they're really useful for holding, copying, and working with pieces of DNA that contain genetic instructions that we want to for things that we want to study, like various proteins. To make sure that we are only working with the bacteria that we intend to be working with, the bacteria that have the gene of our interest in them, we use antibiotic selection. The basic idea is that with molecular cloning, you take the genetic recipe for a protein or something you want made, and then you stick it into a circular piece of DNA called a plasmid, and this serves as a vector or vehicle for sticking that genetic recipe into bacterial cells in a process called transformation, and then the bacteria will make lots of copies. A key element to all of this is the idea of antibiotic-based selection. So in that plasmid vector that has the genetic recipe, um, so your insert, we call it, um, there's also on the generic part of that vector, there's a, usually an antibiotic resistance gene. So this make, lets the bacteria make something that makes it this is a superpower that it can resist a certain bacteria, um, a certain antibiotic. So not all antibiotics, but a specific antibiotic that matches that antibiotic resistance gene. So for example, if you have an ampicillin resistance gene, it would be resistant to ampicillin. So if you plate the bacteria, so after you do that transformation, you then um, put the bacteria on a petri dish filled with food that's spiked with ampicillin, then that um, only the bacterial cells that actually have taken in that plasmid, um, and hopefully that plasmid has your insert, um, those cells will be able to um, grow and divide, and they do that on top of each other to form these gooey clumps called colonies, um, and all other bacteria will get killed out. If you were, however, to plate those cells on um, on food containing like the antibiotic canamycin, however, they wouldn't have resistance and so they would die out. So it's specific resistance to the antibiotic and this allows you to specifically select for bacteria of your choosing, the ones that have the DNA that you wanted them to have. A few main antibiotics that we use in the lab, um, these include ampicillin, um, which is a beta-lactam, we'll get more into what that means in a minute, but these target cell wall synthesis. Um, then we have tetracycline um, and other tetracyclines. So tetracycline, um, it gets its name because it has those four cycles. Canamycin um, is an amino glycoside because it has amino, so those like nitrogen, hydrogen things you see, and glyco, so a bunch of like sugar units. Um, so the amino glycosides, and those both target um, translation, which is protein synthesis, and the, but they do so in different ways. So let's start out with ampicillin. So th the idea with any of these is they have to target something that's unique to bacterial cells, which is the same reason that we can use them in medicine um, to treat people that have bacterial infections. So they have to target something that's specific to the bacteria and not to human cells. So it's not as relevant when we're working in a dish, but it's very relevant when you're working in a human body. Unlike our cells, 
Bacterial cells have a layer called a peptidoglycan wall. Peptides think proteins, glyco think sugar. So they have these chains of sugars cross-linked with these little like peptide linkers. And these cell walls help them maintain their cell shape and make them resistant to changes in pressure and fluid and that sort of thing. And these walls are strengthened so those cross-links are made with an enzyme, so a protein reaction helper called transpeptidase. And so it takes this special end of a peptidoglycan chain and it has these kind of weird reverse um, peptide reverse amino acids. So amino acids are like peptide or protein letters and so it has this D form which is like the opposite of what's normally used which um, isn't that relevant for now except that the shape matter because the shape is similar to that of penicillin and other beta lactams. And so the transpeptidase takes one chain and it links it to the and it attacks that chain and it sticks to that chain. And then it goes and it attacks, uh, then the second chain, the part of a second chain will attack and it will take that first chain and kick off the transpeptidase. So the pepti transpeptidase can do it again in the cell um, and you get that cross link and then the transpeptidase is free to do it again. So the thing with beta lactams and other um, antibiotics like penicillin and ampicillin are this class. So they look kind of like that beta lactam. And so the transpeptidase will go to attack it, but it'll get stuck on. So then you can't have that. So normally you have the transpeptidase attacks one peptide chain, gets stuck. Second ch peptide chain um, attacks that first chain and kicks off the transpeptidase. But with this, you have the transpeptidase attacks the antibiotic and gets stuck, and then nothing can happen. And so this bacteria can't form its walls. But um, if you have this, um, so that's how bacteria can get um, resistant, or, sorry, that's how bacteria can be affected by transpeptidase. But so how do you give transpeptidase, how do you give resistance to these amino glycosides? Um, Often this is done with beta lactamase. So you, the antibiotic resistance gene is this beta lactamase gene. So beta lactamase it attacks the it attacks the beta lactam, and it kind of breaks it so that it can't be used. So normally in the process, the transpeptidase attacks the ampicillin or the penicillin or whatever the beta lactam, and that ring breaks, um, and then the amp gets permanently stuck. But here you're having it break before it even gets stuck on the beta lactamase, so it's basically inactivated. So only cells that have the beta lactamase gene will be able to do that, and so hopefully that's only cells that have your plasmid in them. A problem to keep be aware of with the ampicillin selection is that this beta lactamase gene is actually gets secreted, um, and so it can provide resistance to nearby colonies and this is bad because you don't want to have um, those colonies don't e might not even have the plasmid in them and they get the benefit so basically ampicillin the resistance gene is kind of going on the offensive and attacking the antibiotic before it can even get into the cells but this prevents it from getting into some of the cells that you want to get killed um, so this is mostly a problem if you like overgrow the plates um, so you do it for a long time and typically these colonies will form as these little satellite colonies so they're nearby the big gooey colony there'll be these little dots um, so those are typically satellite colonies that probably don't have the plasmid they just gotten help from the um, secreted BLA um, so um, another class is canamycin so unlike So another class involves um, translational inhibition, or somehow it's messing up. So another another class involves messing with translation, and so also in this class are penicillin, methicillin, oxacillin, ampicillin, cephalosporins, monobacteriums, and carbapenems. So that's one class. Other, and it targets the cell wall building. 
other antibiotics target the process of translation or protein making. The basic idea with translation is that you have the genetic recipe, so copies of this genetic recipe in the form of these messenger RNAs, and the instructions for, for making different protein letters are in the form of codons, which are three RNA letters, and then in the process of translation, these protein-making complexes called ribosomes trans travel along the mRNA, and when they encounter a codon, then um, a molecule called tRNA, which is a form of functional RNA, it comes along and it brings the corresponding amino acids. And um, it knows which one, well, it kind of knows which one to bring because it has this matching anticodon on the other, on one end and then the corresponding amino acid on the other end. And so the ribosome travels along and the tRNAs come and bring the amino acids. Typically, there's a lot of quality control so that only the right amino acids get added. H however, antibio can the antibiotic canamycin can interfere with this quality control process. So it binds to the ribosome in such a way that the wrong tRNAs don't get rejected. How bacteria can get resistance to this is with this an aminoglycoside phosphotransferase. So that's a big long word, but basically, so we talked about before how canamycin was aminoglycoside because it has those aminos, so those nitrogen hydrogen groups. Glycoside, it had glyco sugars. Um, Phosphotransferase, it's transferring this phosphate group, which is a phosphorus surrounded by these oxygens. And the important thing here is that the phosphate group is big and bulky and negatively charged. And the ribosome, a lot of it is actually, um, the bulk of it is RNA. And RNA is negatively charged too. So when you add this negatively charged phosphate group, it prevents the canamycin from binding to the ribosome. Effectively, opposite charges repel each other, remember, and so this provides resistance to the canamycin. Another form um, of translational inhibition is, so that's not really translational inhibition, it's just kind of like translational mesh thing up. So it makes the, the protein that the bacteria make are all dysfunctional, or lots of them are like dysfunctional and not useful. And so because you're messing up the protein though, you're not actually interfering with the bacterial DNA synthesis in any way or anything. So you're not introducing mutations, you're just um, getting them to make useless proteins. So with ampicillin, we saw that you make this beta-lactamase and it gets excreted out of the cells to go on the offensive. With canamycin, it's not excreted out of the cells, but you're still inactivating the antibiotic by modifying it. Um, also in this class is streptomycin, gentamicin, and neomycin. With tetracycline selection, you are just pumping out the um, antibiotic as it gets into the cells. So you're not going on to the offensive, but you're attacking it like as soon as it gets in, but you're not actually modifying it, you're just kicking it out. Also in this class are chlorotetracycline and oxtetracycline, um, which are naturally occurring, as well as methylocycline, methacycline, minocycline, and doxycycline, which are somebody synthetic. So here's the brief overview of what we talked about, the three types we talked about, and there are also different ones. There are also different methods of antibiotic resistance. So sometimes bacteria evolve resistance by doing things such as modifying their ribosomes and so that the antibiotics can't bind and this can be a, actually a big problem in the form of medicine where bacteria are getting this antibiotic resistance.